is like heaven right now. Yeah. Alexis Bromley is from Nebraska. She needed a break from white people. In Omaha, it's very segregated. It's, um, it can be very isolating if you're a person of color. It's hard in Nebraska because it's a red state. And so you just don't know who you interact with on a daily basis, if they believe that you're lesser, if you're inferior, and how that in turn can affect me. She says the current political climate has only made these feelings worse. So she decided to go on a women of color healing retreat in Costa Rica. Hi, such beautiful smiles. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. My blackness is bold. My blackness is uninhibited. My blackness is strength. The idea is simple. For 10 days, black women come together to eat vegan food, meditate, do yoga. The breath in is the reminder that we are safe. And to discuss the frustrations of being black in America. It's like a mental game all the time. And I'm in these spaces where, you know, constantly getting poked and prodded. Oh, let me touch your hair. Oh, you're really pretty for a black girl. Black people don't exercise. Black people don't hike. People are automatically going to have this perception of me before I even open my mouth. So many people's ideologies are being validated that don't see us as human, that don't see us as people. This retreat is one of more than a dozen Black-owned travel groups, marketing trips specifically to people who look like Alexis. In the few years that most of these companies have been open, more and more clients are calling them up. At least five say they've seen a spike in interest coinciding with Trump's election. The idea of Black women reclaiming control over their own mind, body, and spirit is exactly what's needed to survive in a system that constantly tells us that our wellness isn't important. We stopped taking care of ourselves because we were taught, you don't matter. The retreat is the brainchild of Andrea X, a former Brooklynite turned expat. I left the United States because I was sick of gentrification, racism, um, just dealing with being this Black woman, trying to figure it out there. It was 2014, and she'd just lost her job as a healthcare facilitator. What started off as a vacation in Costa Rica became her entire new life. She used all of her personal savings to form this retreat. We needed a safe space that was outside in the United States to hold certain conversations and just to heal. I don't think that we can do that in the United States. I think that we're suffering and suffocating and just dying every single day trying to survive there. You know, not every woman can afford to come out to Costa Rica. What can we do for the racism they experience, for women who can't afford to be part of your retreat? I think that it's important for people in the United States, Black and POC people, to start forming their own spaces there. Easier said than done. White Americans find themselves in white-only meetings and places all the time, without even trying or noticing. When black people want a break from feeling like a minority, they often have to make an effort. Alexis made the effort, and it cost her $2,222. But for her and several other women, that's a reasonable price to pay for a retreat that bans white people. Would having yeah. white people on this trip ruin it? I'd my money back. Yeah, I don't think we would be as open and as honest as we are with the group that we're in now. Yeah. Do you all feel like you've been stereotyped? One thing I always got is you're so well-spoken. And I don't think people understand how much, it's, how insulting that is. What, what else would you expect from me? I'm curious if it's been no different for you since it was, it was, <laughs> the election of President Trump? We're black, we knew that racism has been around, but it's a bit more in our face now. It's made me had to pivot my interactions with people. And like, you know, people who actually support Trump. Yeah. Like, I can't trust you on friendship level, family level, any level, if you actually are supporting someone that, you know, is completely racist. Is some of that anxiety what you feel you need to heal from here? We're looking for ways to uh, coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. you know, and ways to take care of ourselves mm -hmm. because we're not on the agenda. Do you feel like you've increasingly lost the ability to see any shot at a relationship with white people. Every time I have a conversation with them, I just pick up on certain things that they say, whatever. I pick up on the microaggressions, the passive aggressiveness, I pick up on it. So I decided one day to just eliminate white people from my personal life. And ever since then, my life has been way more breezy. Do you think it's at all possible that the fact that white racism, white people have sort of made you leave the U.S., start your whole life over somewhere else, 
feel the need to avoid them it means that they've, they've won. They didn't push me out the United States because if that's the case, they could push me out of any of these countries because they are here, they're everywhere. You know, I feel like white people shouldn't even have passports because they've done enough, especially white Americans, leave them in the United States. They do not need to come here. They do you not- think they should be even able to travel no, here. They need to stay in the United States. But to a white person who's doing their best to be the best white person they can be. I Isn't have no tips for a white person. White person. I, my tip to white people is to let us have our space, let us have our room, and go hang out with other white people. We're okay. You know, you've done enough damage. Lokaha. Samasta Sukino Bavantu. This retreat, much to Andrea's dismay, is held at a white owned resort. That doesn't bother the retreat participants. They haven't cut white people out full time. But 20 minutes down the road, Andrea and a business partner have quietly invested nearly $100,000 to build up their own private retreat space. This is where we'll have the workshops. Is this just like a long con to start building your own black nation out in the middle of Costa Rica? It is. It is. <laughs> Starting with yoga. Yeah. Next is going to be like a mini government. I don't want to have a mini government, but at the same time, it will be a community of just like black people living here. What would you say to someone who's like, you know, it's nice as this sounds like paradise for black people. In some ways, like it's motivated by the same hate that white people who want to create white nations and white spaces have? Um, I would say it, it doesn't have anything to do with them. This is about us healing our community. Is it practical to create a black nation in the middle of a jungle or to chase all white people off your property? Probably not, and most black people don't want to do that. But the feelings of isolation that drove Andrea to build her own community aren't that different from what drove Alexis to this retreat in the first place. Andrea has completely given up on the U.S. I don't blame her. I have been places outside of the U.S. where I have felt more at home and more included than I have ever in my community. Is that an upsetting thing? You know, you say it with like this serene face, but to like go visit somewhere that you're not a citizen home. of and feel more at home than you do in your own country. Yeah, that's reality. Um, unfortunately, that's the reality of our country. 